spring and certainly um, intensifying after the murders of a number of African Americans in this country, we received hundreds of letters from students, faculty, and staff of social work education programs asking CSWE to respond and be more explicitly anti-racist in the kinds of things that we do through the Council on Social Work Education. So Sandra and I quickly convened and we decided that this was a perfect time to form a task force to really help us th think through ways in which CSWE can move the needle on being more explicitly anti-racist. We've used a quote here from Professor Kendi, hopefully you had a chance to hear him on Wednesday during our conference, who has written among several other books, but written a book called How to Be an Anti-Racist. And he makes the point that the opposite of racist isn't not racist, but it's in fact being anti-racist. It's a very dynamic and active stance that we all need to strive for every moment of our days. So the charge of the task force that we convened was to develop an action plan to make social work education stronger by adopting anti-racism pedagogies and establishing anti-racist learning environments. No, we decided that we needed to look at four different areas. Um, first was the educational policy and accreditation standards that we that guide the way we develop our curriculum to prepare the next generation of social work practitioners. Secondly, we wanted to look at curriculum, not only the explicit curriculum, what's taught in the classroom, but the implicit curriculum in terms of how we structure our programs. Next, we wanted to look at conferences and faculty development and ways in which we could really more explicitly be anti-racist in the kinds of conferences and faculty development opportunities that we offer. And finally, looking at student and faculty equity as a key. Even as I recite these four different areas, it should not have been any surprise that there was some real um, common themes that emerged across. Um, each one of these work groups took their charge very, very seriously. And and thought bigger. So if you were in a work group focused on educational policy and accreditation standards, it also led you to thinking about ways in which we should all be achieving student and faculty equity and the other areas. So it's just very interesting and you're gonna hear from our work group chairs in a minute. Sandra, you wanna introduce the two fabulous people that we've had chairing this work? Yes, it is my pleasure and honor uh, to work, uh, yeah, with these two amazing scholars uh, and leaders. So in thinking about who needed to lead the charge, uh, putting our heads together again, Darla and I, um, obviously, uh, Dr. Yolanda Padilla, who's done an amazing job as director of the CSW Center for Diversity, Social and Economic Justice, um, and uh, a scholar in her own right, um, would come forth to be one of the leaders of this. And I think every leader needs a co-leader and they have made an amazing team. Uh, we've often laughed about, uh, we're all living this process while we're trying to build it. So uh, Dr. Tracy Whitaker, who's Associate Dean at Howard University and somebody I've known for many, many years and admire um, her work um, became a part of that team. And so also uh, they are supported by the amazing work, the staff person, Lorenzo Shaw Graham, who I've just met recently, but been very impressed with him too. So just excited about what they've done. And we've been allowed to sit in on several of the work groups and be an integral part of this process. So thank you, you all for the work you've done. And now I'll hand the mic to Yolanda and Tracy. Thank you so much, Sandra. I just, and Darla, wanted to just echo some sentiments. It has been amazing working with Yolanda and with this task force. We, you have done an amazing job of bringing together people who are dedicated, um, passionate, and really committed to helping us move intentionally towards a more anti-racist, vision of social work education. Um, we have had a tall order. We are asking, we asked our work groups to develop recommendations 
in a very short period of time so that we could get busy on developing an action plan. So you're gonna to hear today what some of their recommendations are, and I'm so excited to be a part of this work. Thank you. Yolanda, you're on mute. I think you're on mute, yeah. So I'm going to move on to present the um, co-chairs of each of the four work groups. So the uh, Educational Policy and Accreditation Standards Work Group was um, co-chaired by, or is being co-chaired by Dr. Rebecca Maldonado Moore uh, from New Mexico Highlands University and Dr. Michelle Roundtree from the University of Texas at Austin. The Curriculum Work Group is being chaired by Dr. Michael Robinson from the University of Georgia and Dr. Yarnisha Dyson uh, from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Conferences and Faculty Development um, Work Group is being led, co-chaired by Dr. Tiffany Balfour from the University of Utah and Dr. Karina Hill, Hill uh, from Our Lady of the Lake University. And the fourth work group, Student and Faculty Equity Group, um, is being co-chaired by Dr. Rocio Calvo from Boston College and Dr. Lauren Davis from the University of Michigan. And I want to say that it's been a pleasure to work with the work group, with the co-chairs of the work groups, and that I have really appreciated their commitment, their passion, their ideas, um, along with all the um, the members of the work groups. Uh, as Tracy was saying, and I think Sandra too, we had the opportunity to be in some of the meetings, uh, in the meetings of, of all the work groups at one time or another. So we're gonna now uh, hear directly from the uh, work group chairs. Greetings. This presentation is a quick overview of the role that the CSWE Anti-Racism Task Force for Educational Policy and Accreditation has developed. And these are our executive summary notes. I would like to emphasize that this was a broad representation throughout the country of members of the task force representing Canada and the United States. And as you can see, it was the representation was wide and very intense given the amount of time allotted for our work. The vision of the EPA was really an opportunity for this collective to examine the role of anti-racism and the direction that we as a, um, a body, a collective body of CSWE has an opportunity to really look at where we stand, where we are positioned to critique racist structures, to look at policies and practices, and to really think deeply about how anti-racism is affecting not only our country, but our CSWE programs, our students, our faculty, and our communities. The larger vision, of course, is to be more inclusive and supportive within institutions, supportive of faculty as well as staff and students for all of those who represent Black, Indigenous, and people of color. There were four mini groups that reviewed the various EPA sections and the 17 members gravitated towards one of these four, which we ended up developing a set of recommendations, but these recommendations are interrelated and they in many times overlap with our larger vision of uh, creating a more equitable and inclusive um, EPA context. So we began this process with developing a set of questions 
for the 17 members. And this served as a guidepost. It wasn't a requirement that we address all of these questions, but they were um, questions that helped us frame what we were looking at in the examination of existing EPA language practices and policies. And obviously this was a very um, labor intensive, actually sometimes emotional experiences of having to respond to these questions as educators and recognizing that we have been experiencing anti-racist behaviors and practices directed at us as BIPOC. Next. The terms, I've used this term a few times already. This is the, the language we're going to be using from here on out. Equity is one of those conversations or terms that we really need to pay close attention to. And we developed a couple of statements that have been used in other programs such as the University of Manitoba. Next. Equity. Equity accounts for the very differences, including cultures and in, in individual attributes and experiences for the purposes of achieving equal outcomes. Equity is about educational outcomes that demonstrate fairness in access, programs, strategies, or curricula. Being equity-minded is the ability to recognize disparities may exist for students, staff, faculty of color within educational systems. This is distinguished from inclusion, which is the act of creating environments in which any individuals or group can, be, can feel welcome, respected, supported, and valued to fully participate. An inclusive and welcoming climate embraces differences and offers respect in words and actions for all people. So the task force uh, ended up creating four separate recommendations and you have our executive summary report. We're really proposing diverse theoretical approaches depending on the program and their uh, willingness to actually accept or adopt alternative theories, alternative to colonized versions. The second major rec recommendation is that we really have to talk more about um, equity and that systemic oppression and white supremacy has really driven a lot of EPA uh, for, for decades and that we have to be more intentional. Now, this includes the respectability of politics and the use of particular terms. So please pay a little bit closer attention to the types of um, questions that site visitors may or may not ask during the actual site visit. The third recommendation, of course, is about the structural issues impacting BIPOC faculty, which is, um, um, on a deeper level, many people have to begin to seriously consider the value, the merit, the worth of uh, faculty of color. And our last recommendation is that there be a new anti-racism commission who can work collaboratively and collectively with the other commissions to truly get at advancing anti-racism. So that's it. So, and thank you so very much for your, your time and consideration of our recommendations. Good day, everybody. My name is Dr. Yarnesia Dyson and I'm an assistant professor of social work at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. I have had the pleasure of serving as the co-chair for the curriculum development work group alongside Dr. Michael Robinson, who's an associate professor at the University of Georgia. We are so excited and pleased to share the findings from our work group. We realize that these findings that derive that you'll hear me talk about 
sounds a lot like the work groups that you've already heard or that you will hear in this recording. So this means that there was so much synergy across all of the work groups while we were working independent of each other, which is so wonderful. This synergy speaks to the amazing task that everyone is passionate about these goals and ensuring an anti-racist approach to social work education. And so in summary, I will detail some of our recommendations, but please know that there are more to come in the next iterative stages with CSWE. Overall, we talked about the importance of assessing for anti-racism and specifically anti-Black racism in social work education. And we talked about the importance of calling a thing a thing and naming things. So if something is white supremacy, if something is a microaggression, we talked about the importance of naming it. And also the importance of getting away from language that's passive, like programs should do this or programs can possibly do this to mandating programs to enact change so that anti-racism goes away as it relates to our curriculums. And we talked about this intentionality across all four program levels, BSW, MSW, PhD, and DSW. And so we're grateful that CSWE is excited to make these changes and we're going to continue to um, implement these changes as much as we can individually in our programs, but we realize this is a structural component, so it's definitely going to have to take on the masses to do this. And this relates to the suggestion that many of these recommendations are also tied to accreditation standards for programs of social work in order for them to happen. In sharing these recommendations briefly, I'm going to go over the following. We talked about the importance of teaching about the history of the social work profession and the importance of acknowledging how race has been overlooked and racism has been embedded from the beginning, which reflects the institutional racism that we continue to see today. And we talk about this being emphasized in the teaching history and in its current form in order for us to get to the importance of centering anti-Black racism and anti-racism across pedagogy within social work. We've talked about the importance of decolonizing all methods of instruction. So this includes the syllabi, the practices, and the teachings. We were fortunate to have Dr. Denby from Ohio State University on our work group. And so she shared about a model they're working on that talked about and asked these questions, how are we teaching? What do we teach? Who is the teacher? Who's the deliverer of the message? And who is taught, meaning the students? Our work group also uncovered the importance of the hiring standards, as well as the gatekeeping that often goes on in social work education courses. And we've talked about improving um, racist, um, excuse me, we've talked about improving pedagogical styles that help facilitate um, topics on racism and anti-racism, because we understand that that message deliverer, that person that's teaching this content, must know how to deliver this information so that people understand or students understand what's being asked. There was a concern about programs that are graduating students who were known to be racist or expose racist ideologies. So we've talked about how programs could think about incorporating ways to address that so that we don't graduate students from our programs who go out to help to hurt the, the populations that they're supposed to help. Our work group then split into two sub work groups as it relates to curriculum development. And these included pedagog pedagogical approaches as well as administrative practices. And so these work groups focused on frameworks for teaching, administrative policies that need to be considered, how things are taught and what is taught as well as the incorporation of theories that are not often spoke about. So we talked about the importance of um, educating about Afrocentric theory and Afrocentrism. We talked about the importance of looking at intersectionality and how that affects the way people navigate society as well as critical race theory. We talked about the accreditation standards once again at length because we feel like in order for this to happen, things have to be tied to accreditation. And we also talked about the importance of programs centering diversity, equity, and inclusion in their programs, as well as in their hiring practices, as well as their students that matriculate in the programs. So as I've shared, there was so much synergy across all of the work groups. There are so many things that we all said the same, although we worked independent of each other, which indicates that we are also passionate. 
we are grateful that CSWE is looking at and being willing to make these changes. And we understand given the current state of society, today's date is November 9th, 2020, that there is a lot of change that needs to happen. And if we're going to graduate students from schools and departments and programs of social work, it needs to be from an anti-racist, anti-Black racism approach. We are looking forward to the continued synergy, to the continued synergy across all work groups in our efforts to advance anti-racism in social work education. The next few iterative steps will be coming soon from CSWE, and we are hoping that our recommendations are considered and we are definitely on board to continue to improve our efforts going forward. Thank you. Hello, colleagues. My name is Tiffany Baffour, and I'm Associate Professor and Director of the MSW Program at the University of Utah College of Social Work. I also serve as a member of the CSWE Task Force to Advance Anti-Racism, as well as co-chair of its work group that focuses on conferences and faculty development. I serve as co-chair along with Karina Gill. Today, colleagues, I'd like to talk with you about a few recommendations from our task force. Essentially, we feel very strongly that it's important for social work education to consistently across all of its social work accredited programs to deliver strategies and content that effectively prepare students to dismantle systems of oppression. In order for the profession to effectively advance its racial justice mission, it must first address the knowledge, skills, and values of its educators. All faculty and administrators should receive ongoing and relevant training regarding how to engage in conversations about anti-racist practices, advocate for the human rights of BIPOC clients at all systems levels, and effectively deliver anti-racist pedagogy. Colleagues, these are not the tasks of a few faculty members. These are the tasks for us all. To that end, we understand that there's a great divergence in institutional investments among pro programs and resources. In many cases, there's a dearth of individuals who are trained and prepared to engage in this curriculum. Additionally, there's a lack of evidence about the effectiveness of anti-racist training and its preparation for social work faculty members to understand issues related to race and racism. To these ends, we make several recommendations. One, the 2022 EPOS should include specific language regarding standard two, which relates to field education. We suggest that this standard address field liaison and instructors education and training in anti-racist and anti-oppressive theories and practices. Similarly, we recommend that standard three, currently the diversity standard, address faculty and administrator education and training in anti-racist and anti-oppressive theories and practices. To that end, our second recommendation is that CSWE should develop an anti-racist and anti-oppressive training academy that would address separately several groups of stakeholders. Group one would be faculty members, full and part-time. Group two would be faculty, field liaisons, and field instructors. And then group three would be social work administrators. So if there were individuals who were uh, administrators and teaching, uh, essentially, we would recommend that they also attend the um, instructor training as well as the administrator training, but this would not be required. So as part of this recommendation, um, essentially, we are also suggesting that each social work um, faculty member require a minimum of six hours of training um, as part of the new 2022 EPOS. 
And again, this anti-racist and anti-oppressive training academy but would be one of the suggested ways that um, faculty members, administrators, and or field instructors um, and liaisons could obtain this training. Due to um, time restraints, we were not able to develop a full proposal. So some suggested things to think about in terms of next steps would certainly be um, what training methods should be emphasized, how will the training be evaluated in terms of its effectiveness, what are the intended goals and outcomes, and then what are the specific theories and practices regarding change that we would like to see. We understand that there's a need for a collaborative effort of many, many stakeholders involved um, to see this academy come to fruition. In addition, our third recommendation is the development of a clearinghouse for anti-racist curriculum and training. Our work group recommends that CSWE develop a sustained commitment to an anti-racist agenda through hosting a clearinghouse to gather and share information specifically designed to promote training and faculty development to decolonize the social work curriculum. We think this clearinghouse or a variety of resources could be very, very helpful to many social work educators, administrators, as well as field faculty and um, field instructors working to engage in this work. Thank you so much, colleagues, and we look forward to next steps. Good afternoon. My name is um, Rocio Calvo. I am an associate professor and the assistant dean for equity, justice, and inclusion at the Boston College School of Social Work. I am here with all of you this afternoon on behalf of the faculty and student working group of the Anti-Racist Task Force. I would like to present to you some of the recommendations that the group has submitted to the Council of Social Work Education. But before I talk about the recommendations briefly, let me clarify what is the perspective that the group have used to reach to these recommendations. Our goal was to focus on those changes that are systemic and transformational. So we can propose actions that actually lead to long-term change. For instance, we would like to have detailed data on the proportion of BIPOC faculty that are in each school. What we mean by that is rather than getting an aggregate of proportion of different um, group of faculty divided by ethno-racial background, we want to know what is the rank and what is the retention of that faculty. That will not only increase the presence of this faculty, but will also put a spotlight on their career trajectories. To give you an example, are people concentrated in assistant professors? How many people get tenure? How many people get full professor? How long does, does it take? Is there a disproportionate number of years that BIPOC faculty reach to full professor versus non-BIPOC non faculty? So we want to have that data very clear and we propose that to be incorporated in the annual survey that the Council of Social Work Education do to all the schools every year. Same thing with administrative positions of, these, of deans and directors. We think that having continuous data on where people are and what are their career trajectories we will be able to put the light on disparities that are uh, evident and also on actions to correct those disparities. Another recommendation that we have that is related to uh, data collection is uh, we would like more transparency in the pass rates 
of different um, social, uh, on, on the past rates of the licensure exam of different group of social workers. Are there a disproportionate um, rate of passing? And by the same token, why is that? We would also like to review the exam to see if it contains different perspectives and different worldviews of how to approach social work rather than only one. Another proposal that we have is we would like to establish a government body that is composed by students within the organization of the Council of Social Work Education. These students are the future of our profession. And we think that by having the students involved systemically as part of the structure, it will help to advance our goals of dismantling racism and white supremacy in the profession. Relatively to students, we would like to propose actions to decolonize the curriculum, including uh, field education. Um, when we look at uh, what we are teaching, we want to have indicators that look at what perspective are we using, what uh, values, how do we evaluate um, human behavior, what is appropriate and what is not. Because if we only use one perspective, every other behavior automatically is going to be seen from a deficit perspective if does not conform to the uh, white majority perspective. So we want to decolonize the curriculum by including other ways to see the world that are as valid as the majority white way that we use now and train our students and their future professional in these different perspectives. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful rest of the conference. Hasta luego.